I have got a massive pile of scrap metal behind me. I remembered to hide the rat in this video. Let's see how we got to this point in cutting up that. Stick around. I had to go up to storage and get some wheels and tires for the uh, Caprice because the ones that were on it were too big to, uh, to go underneath of the Plymouth. But they also belong to the Lincoln and I needed to get the Lincoln off the lift. It's just a shuffling game. You guys know, anytime you organize a garage or, or do anything like this, you, you basically just shuffle stuff from one pile or one area to the other. And that's, that's no different for this. So let's get this done. These are 59 Buick wheels. Going on an 89 Caprice chassis. Pretty good. A little bit of Buick in there, you know. Since I do love my Buicks, I can't complain. Then a, a little bit of Buick is going on my Plymouth. battery, ratchet strapped and vice gripped to the frame. I got to fill up my uh, NASCAR proof fuel jug here in a minute. It was burning gas really quick. Like it'd go through that gallon, just bring it around the shop. And then I realized it's because there's a return on the pump. So whatever gas is not burning is just getting dumped into the tank. So I'm going to remedy that before I move it. I just want to make sure it still starts. Uh, this battery is the one out of this Nissan truck and it was dead. It was on the charger, but I don't know how dead it is. So these lights in here look a little dim. And I've had a couple people tell me that you shouldn't start cars on brake cleaner. I guess the flammability isn't, you know, good with the compatibility, but I think it'll be okay. Let's see. She still runs, we're good. Put some gas in the jug. Alright. Gas up my jug here. Is that that chlorine gas that's gonna kill you or is that only the other kind of brake cleaner? I don't know. I'll be back. All I could find was a piece of brake line and I clamped it down real tight. And now it looks like a moonshine still, but we ought to be able to run her into the shop like this.
Well, it kind of worked. I knew it was going to leak, but I got some transmission fluid leaking and some fuel leaking. Those are a couple things that I want to take care of while it's in the shop. Make it to where it's a, uh, a more easy, safe, just fire it up and drive it chassis, you know, so I don't have to vice grip the, uh, the battery in it, things like that. And then I got to cut a bunch of this firewall down out of my way and cut these quarter panels off the rest of the way and start trimming things up and measure from the, uh, the rear axle back and see how much of this trunk pan I have to cut out. So that's where I got to get started. The cool thing is the Plymouth and the Caprice station wagon both have the fuel door on the same side. So I'll be able to use the, uh, the Caprice gas tank. If this was a regular Caprice, the, I think the filler neck is, might be behind the license plate, but I'd have to check. I know Cadillacs are, maybe Caprice isn't. Maybe Caprice isn't, I don't know. But that's where we're at right now. I think I'm gonna start by chopping all this out. I might leave this inner wheel well for now because it might be kind of cool to use the station wagon seat that folds down. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I might end up cutting all this out because it'll just be easier to drop the whole car down over it if it doesn't have anything in the way and then just build my own wheel wells, which would be pretty simple compared to some of the other things I've had to do in this car. Then I gotta cut the, uh, the B pillar out and I'm gonna cut the firewall down a lot. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't cut up all this wiring. If I can avoid it, I'd like to save it uh, and reuse as much of it as I can because it's it's wiring for, you know, rear speakers and all the rear lights, the reverse lights, things like that that'll come in handy. The only wires that I did cut are some of these door wires, but that was uh, power locks, power windows, you know, nothing super important. There was a speaker in the doors, but... Since my car is a two-door, I don't need the rear door stuff. I did keep the front door stuff intact in case I ever do want to put door poppers or even power windows or anything on it. So I'm going to go through now and unhook these lights and finish cutting these quarters apart. I'm going to take my time on that one because that's where the uh, filler neck, the fuel filler neck is, which I guess is why that wheel well is so long is to protect the filler neck. So I might leave that wheel well as is, cut up to here where it's doubled up, just cut that off and leave that much and build onto that. So I'm just gonna keep on, keep on trimming away the fat. We are getting a lot chopped up. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting on this quarter panel, uh, which I'm nervous about because I'm always nervous around gas cans, gas jugs, gas tanks. Uh, but it's walled in there pretty good. So I'm gonna cut down through here and then down through here and kind of leave this floating and see if I can get to it. So let's get started with that. All my darn batteries kept dying. So I got all the batteries charging currently. 
Whoop! Dang! I'm a mess. Dropped my impact. So I got my little micro impact here. Take this. Man. What is happening? All right, there we go. So all my batteries are dying. Take my little impact. I'm going to take this wheel well liner out and see if I can get to the gas filler next. See what it looks like. So I can cut the rest of this quarter panel away. Of course. Man. Okay. That's kind of what I expected. Yeah, there's one back there, too. There we go. Now I just gotta get that out. Alright, just a bit. I know these videos don't feature the Plymouth. But they are still about. And see, I'm going to be able to use that filler neck to go in the factory to in the spot. Now I can take a short sawzall blade and cut up through there and down through here and not worry about nicking the, uh, the filler neck. Because there is gas in the fuel tank that I need to drain. It's probably not super flammable, but it'll be flammable enough to where I don't want to you know, get into it. So once my battery's charged, I'll do all that. I guess for now, hmm. what am I gonna do? Maybe start cleaning up some wiring up front. This might be the last video that I filmed exclusively with my iPhone. I finally ordered a laptop to the quality of my videos. And it's supposed to get here today. GM ever put drains on their tanks, did they? That was a Ford thing. The gas tank looks like it's pretty solid. So hopefully I won't have to buy another one. We'll see. I'm gonna cut all this off too, level, I think. It just, just 86 all this, basically up to the top of the frame. And then just build my drop down separate. I might just go ahead and salt all this rear bumper off too, get it out of the way. Because I think that's going to be easier than unbolting it. Just because I'm lazy. Owie! There's one side. Maybe I should put a sharper blade on oh, it. It looks pretty good still. My batteries just don't like this. 
This is the battery for the drill. The one for the Sawzall is a lot bigger. Time to do some fine tuning scenes. All right, got to cut out this B pillar now, and a lot of the rear will be pretty much done. So, I guess we'll just go ahead and do that. Go ahead and lop this pillar off. Where did I put the saws off? I don't remember. Probably right in front of me somewhere. Oh, there it is. I should have uh, 
Just use the corded sawzall for all this, huh? <sighs> Got that. Cut a little bit of this firewall out. Flowers are still standing. That was a Ghostbusters reference. Hmm. I cut through underneath the top of the cowl, so hopefully I could just lift this off. Less more. There's a little bit hanging on. Let me go cut that off. I almost forgot to show all the destruction. So I'm going to go ahead and we got the quarters cut, a lot of the inner quarter cut, the rear bumper chopped off. The pillars started a lot of the cowl cut apart. This I think is going to work out really good because I would like to keep the same brake set up and everything if I can. If it's not too tall, this might be too tall under the hood of the uh, Plymouth. Actually, I can almost guarantee that's going to be too tall. We'll see how it looks. If it's not too tall, then we'll leave it. But now I'm second-guessing that. Uh, I got the top of that cut off. Let's see. What else do we get? This one, obviously this pillar, and then this all chopped up. So the only thing I'll have to do now is trim some of that rocker off and maybe some of this rear off, and we can start lower in that Plymouth body over top of this and measuring and cutting. But I am done for the night for sure. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I have got a massive, massive mess that I'm gonna leave for tomorrow. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys next week.